Okay, eight in the morning, right to maybe tea at six o'clock at night, the traffic is heavy, heavy. It's really very busy. Glasgow has a long tradition of solving its transportation problems by, among other things, successful road building aimed at incorporating and attacking the interlocking problems of housing, employment and communication. At the turn of the century, Glasgow still had a highly centralised population with emphasis on heavy engineering, business and commerce. Planners were quick to realise that an improved communication system was essential. Thus it was that Glasgow became the only city outside London to build an underground and an extensive local rail network linking the city with neighbouring towns and communities. With the post-war boom in car ownership, the city planners of the early 1960s recognised a need to review the city's transportation network as part of a major urban redevelopment programme. This involved slum clearance and an influx of light industry to replace decaying employment opportunities in heavy engineering. To complement proposals to replace the tram network with improved bus systems, a highway plan of grade separate motorways was proposed in 1965. This would channel extraneous traffic away from residential communities. By 1981, the M8 motorway from the west of Paisley through Glasgow city centre had been constructed. This is the Kingston Bridge in its early days. It's now the most heavily trafficked urban river crossing in Europe carrying in excess of 155,000 vehicles a day. Successive reviews of the Strathclyde Structure Plan have identified a need for continuing investment in both road and public transport. The 1988 update upholds this. Strathclyde Region's 1992 policy document, Travelling in Strathclyde, outlined a comprehensive package of transportation proposals. These included new rail lines and stations, a new rail link to Glasgow Airport, extensive investment in a light rapid transit network for the city, and an extension of the M74 motorway from Fullerton Road to the M8 at Kingston. The 1988 structure plan for Glasgow recognised that a continued increase in traffic levels was likely to exacerbate existing problems. These could not solely be resolved by traffic restraint and investment in public transport. This would result in conditions such as unacceptably high levels of traffic through environmentally sensitive areas, the relocation of business away from the city centre, which would have a detrimental effect on continued investment. Bus systems would cease to operate effectively. The M74 extension aims to address these issues. During the 1988 structure plan studies, two alignment corridors for the extension of the M74 were considered. The northern corridor ran along the north side of the River Clyde to a point east of Glasgow Green, where the motorway would cross the River Clyde, go and tunnel under Richmond Park, and follow the line of the Caledonia Road to Odd Kingston. The southern corridor immediately crossed the River Clyde, ran round the steelworks and across Cambus Lang Road, before following the line of the main London Glasgow Railway line to Eglinton Toll and thereafter to Kingston. Extensive consultations at the time determined that the Northern Corridor would have the greater impact on residential and amenity areas, while the Southern Corridor impacted more on industry. It was decided that the Southern Corridor should be adopted for further development for this planning application. The proposed Northern Extension, approximately 7 kilometres long, would provide a link between the existing M74 at Fullerton Road in the east and the M8 west of Kingston. From the Fullerton Road junction, the route bridges the Clyde and runs to the north of the existing steelworks, creating a junction as it crosses Cambus Lang Road. The route then continues alongside the main London Glasgow railway line on embankments, crossing over Farm Loan Road. Thereafter, it diverges from the railway to pass over Rutherglen Station, Queen Street and Glasgow Road. As it passes over Glasgow Road, a junction would be formed allowing travel to the east and west.
From here, the route continues adjacent to the railway towards Cathcart Road, passing under Pulmody, where the existing railway depot would have to be relocated on the south side of the main line. Having passed under Cathcart Road, the route continues towards Kingston, passing over Pollock Shores Road, Eglinton Street, Kilburnie Street and West Street on an elevated structure. At the Kingston Interchange, access is provided to the M8 in both directions as well as to the surface level street network. A major landscape feature is proposed here. Under EC legislation, road developments such as the M74 extension require in-depth analyses and assessments into the environmental effects which may occur. In compliance with this, environmental consultants Ove Arup have assessed and analysed the potential impact of the proposals on the following. Traffic, noise and vibration, air quality, contaminated land, water resources, ecological resources, townscape and visual effects, cultural heritage, business and commerce, and social and community resources. For example, residents within sight of the motorway voiced concerns about noise pollution due to increased traffic flow. Some properties may qualify for noise insulation. In order to minimize the effects of noise, those properties in Rutherglen, which are close to the road, will be protected by a two-meter noise barrier and landscape mounding running from Cambuslang Road to Glasgow Road. Similarly, with properties in the Tory Glen area. In terms of air quality, 18 sensitive areas were identified and tested. At present, these sites show pollutant levels well within the 1992 guidelines and indications are that they will remain so with the scheme in place. Indeed, conditions will improve as current legislation to reduce vehicle emissions comes increasingly into effect. The redirection of traffic away from certain main residential areas and shopping precincts, such as Main Street Rutherglen, would inevitably enhance the area not only in terms of noise, but also air quality, with reductions in some emissions of up to 70%. A major cause of concern for many residents are the areas of contaminated land and chrome waste sites, which were the result of industrial activity within the last century. 35 sites were identified as being potentially hazardous. However, in the vast majority of cases, construction on the road was considered unlikely to cause the disturbance of contaminated materials. Generally, the proposed solution is to provide an inert capping and support the embankments on driven piles, with the motorway providing a capping layer for the contamination, reducing infiltration. West of Glasgow Road, minor adverse effects in groundwater contamination may result from installation of the piling. Cut-off drains are proposed along the railway at Southcroft Road to deal with existing seepage. The division of Molesmire and Westburn, by diverting existing freshwater sources before they enter areas of contamination, is also proposed. Several broad objectives were considered to ensure that adverse effects on the local ecology, if any, were to be kept to a minimum, and where they did occur, steps were to be taken to compensate. This has been attempted by aiming to provide at least the same area of new habitat as that lost. Tree and shrub planting will be done using only local species. There will be supplemental planting on the banks of the Clyde, no felling of trees during the bird breeding season, and endangered local flora will be transplanted to more suitable locations. At worst, the effects on any one piece of land are expected to be minor, and in certain cases, of benefit. The establishment of new woodlands in Cambus Lang and the proposed new landscape planting at the Kingston Interchange are cases in point. In an attempt to integrate the road with the existing urban townscape, a design style has been established which would be sympathetic to local townscape with landscaping to enhance the character and quality of the area. The impact of the road is most significant at Rutherglen and north of Eglinton Toll. At Rutherglen, the elevation of the road would impact on distant views, though in the near distance replaces views of railway sidings, industry or Dalmanic sewage works. The potential for commercial development with the new extension will be high. Although there may be some disruptions in the industrial estates, the benefits due to improved accessibility to inner and outer southeast Glasgow, where there is a commitment to improve employment opportunities, will outweigh this. 
Economic development will result in better communications. The Moss End Eurofreight Terminal and Glasgow Airport development are examples of this. Complementing the motorway proposals are plans for traffic calming and management in residential areas, with priority being given to public transport and bus movement. Included in the planning application are proposals for new walkways and cycle tracks, easing communications, linking areas of open space and providing access to walkways either side of the River Clyde. Strathclyde Regional Council submitted their planning application for the road on 16th January 1995. Objection or support for the proposed scheme can be registered with the Director of Planning at Glasgow District Council Planning Department, 231 George Street, Glasgow. An exhibition and display of the proposal will be on show from 23rd January 1995 in the District Council Planning Department. Since 1988, the idea of extending the M74 motorway to the south side of the Kingston Bridge in Glasgow has been in Strathclyde Region's structure plan. And while the Regional Council doesn't have the finance to commence this major project, there is a strong likelihood that the government will want to address this issue in the near future. The Secretary of State for Scotland has stated that he wants Glasgow District Council, the local planning authority, to deal with the detailed planning application. And this process is about to begin. I would encourage every Glaswegian to become involved in the important debate about the economic, social and environmental benefits that this major project can bring to the west of Scotland.